All right. What's up guys, Chris here. Real quick, the video that you're about to watch is a little delayed by a week. I wanted to upload it a week ago, but um, so, so basically this is a five day challenge where I go out and build a store over the course of five consecutive days. However, there were some unforeseen circumstances like the ad account getting disabled. We'll see if Rob here <laughs> can figure this out. A few days went by, nothing was done at the store, and we had to do a little bit of movie magic to put it all together to look like five days of work, despite the days where nothing was going on and we were trying to get things figured out. Okay, I'm done now. Enjoy this monster of a video. In this video, Betty's gonna be the face of the new brand that I'm building. I built a new custom sock brand in just five days. $60 yesterday in sales. From competition research. They don't interact or engage with their customer base. To designing our products. Not bad. And sending hordes of traffic. Look, when it comes to building a highly addictive e-commerce brand that literally has customers starving for your products. Oh, <gasps> Selling personalized products is what I see to be most powerful. Stitch Fix CEO Katrina Lake says it's the business of personalization that sets them apart. Looking at my own life, I have vitamins being shipped to me every single month with my name on them. I have this sitting on my desk right here, which I did not buy for myself. And I have that canvas sitting on top of my bookshelf. One to one, human to human personalization scalably. We're gonna be selling socks in this video. And in my opinion, socks have very little margin, especially when it comes to print on demand, which means you gotta mark them up. And selling a pair of these for $25 just seems crazy. However, not one store, but multiple other stores have built their million dollar empires selling just socks, but not just ordinary socks, custom dog socks, with a startup budget of what I'd imagine to be less than $1,000. So I propose a question. How hard would it be to actually go out there and sell these? I mean, Pop Socks alone has spent millions of dollars on advertising and has even been on The View. So doesn't this mean that the product is so saturated to the point of making profitability harder? I need and want to know the answer to this. So, <laughs> I decided to find out. Before beginning our five day challenge, I need to extensively study our competition. From what the website looks like, to the ads they're running, and estimated amount of lifetime revenue. 122,000 likes on Divi Up's Facebook page, which is actually more than any of the other competitors. I go one step further and order something from three of these stores. By doing this, I want to see what the entire buying experience looks like, what post-purchase emails I get, and if the delivered product lives up to its expectation. Kind of like a piece of trash, like brown dirt on it. The picture is not even clear. My goal right now is submerging myself into these stores. Yo, 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 I know you're sick, but you know that photo I asked you the other, the other day of Betty, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. I got these in the mail right here. <laughs> After researching the return addresses, I wasn't able to pinpoint any print on demand suppliers, which I guess is a good thing. I was on the edge of my seat hoping that one of the suppliers we decide to work with isn't responsible for these blue socks. Everything I order online, if I ever wanna see their buying process, it comes in here. All the pack-ins, any stickers I receive with my order. If I really want to jump into this highly competitive environment and make it a good use of time, I need to understand everything they're doing and why they're doing it. Jude! Hey, Chris. Meet Jude. She's the brand manager for the stores I run. She's a wizard when it comes to digging things up, so I asked her to investigate a few key stores. Tell me a little bit about what you dug up. What I noticed on all brands, um, their website is kind of like pretty slow. When I was working with another brand before, um, that is, this is something that we wanted to avoid. Who would you say had a really good email marketing strategy? Suxury actually has got really good email flow strategy. I've actually tried to make uh, purchase yeah uh, but just to see their abandoned cart email flows really good information from the customer service to the email flows and their activity on social media our biggest advantage with selling these socks is that we can scale massively if needed all we're doing here is just editing the customer's photo and simply making it look nice on a sock template building a team of designers that can do this job will be the easiest part the bigger guys being divvy up in puff socks are selling them at about 20 for $25. With all this information and a plan of execution, I feel confident to begin this challenge. Wish me some luck building this sock store. Probably gonna be the biggest puff sock store there is out there. Oh, sh**, I need to say puff sock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. 
him? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, Pup Sox, Pup Sox is now my competitor, so don't, yeah, don't, <laughs> don't, I, I don't want to hear about Pup Sox around me anymore. They're now my arch enemy. Okay, so first things first, I need to figure out what we're going to sell. Obviously custom socks, but what kind of socks? What backgrounds are we going to offer? My objective is to differentiate as best as possible. The last thing I want to happen here is to blend in with all these other stores that have been at this for years. I've limited our products down to five background collections. Ooh, I just came up with something good. Halloween. Ooh, yeah. That's a great one. That's a good one. It's exciting. I then head on over to Etsy and use the keyword digital paper to find backgrounds fitting my categories. I spent about 30 minutes making purchases with various sellers and building a folder with all these assets. Before we begin designing our sock products, a store name is high up on the to-do list. I'm not going to lie though, I really dislike this part because it can be tough. Lulu meaning an outstanding example of a person or thing. People think that of their pets. Lulupup.com. What do you think, Andrew? Lulupup. At Lulupup. And with that, we have a winner. I purchased the domain on GoDaddy, set up the Shopify store, linked the domain, and then start researching different print-on-demand fulfillment centers offering socks. If you're unfamiliar with POD, all I'm doing is working with a big print shop that I only pay if a customer pays me. When that happens, they'll print and ship it. After crunching some numbers, our out-the-door cost per unit for Printful is $14.70. Guin, it's $11.90. And Printify, it's $7.47. Given our profit margins, our so valuable with this product, we're going to start working with Printify. I think it could work with upsells added in. We know that this is what their socks look like, so we can safely start designing our products and uploading mockups into the store. Before we can use our Etsy assets, we need to find a good product mockup on Creative Market. We have to find the one that resembles this most closely. So on Printify, this is what our sock looks like. We have a black part there, black part there. We need to find something like that on Creative Market. I decided to purchase this one, download it, open it inside of Photoshop, and start designing. Right when I thought we're gonna have to buy this lady's other digital papers inside of Etsy, Andrew showed me this really cool trick inside of Photoshop where we could just change the color just like that, simple as that. No need to buy anything else. After a few hours, all our products are created. For now, we have four sock collections, Dog Bones, Tropical, Halloween, and Food. You're gonna buy these, right? I don't I'm have a pet. Huh? You don't have a pet? I don't have a dog. It's okay. That's what Google Images is for. Now, before we move on, let me quickly outline what I did. I opened up the Creative Market mockup in Photoshop and then edited these two layers. I start by giving myself a blank template, add our background, and then the pet photo. All I did was simply use the erase tool, then the quick select tool to delete anything that's left over. To make the product stand out, I added an outline to Betty. Finally, all I did was copy and paste the finished outline. I close out the layer, click save, and bam. I then did the same thing with the second layer. Now I'm not gonna show you guys the product pages just yet because we need a logo. I start drafting it out inside of Canva. As I've said before, when it comes to starting a store, try to do this for free. Chances are most sellers on Fiverr are doing exactly what I'm doing. I head on over to Flat Icon, find some sort of paw vector, upload that into Canva, and come to a final render. I think this, this is it. It's playful, it has a playful font, playful color. I add that to our brand management folder, head back into Shopify, and get to work building out the store. Time passes by and you did not miss much besides the standard Shopify stuff like app configuration and setting up our shipping options. Here's the apps I recommend. What I'm doing right now is putting together a document for my on-call developer. Before I show you the store, he's going to work his magic and get it in pristine condition. To be 39. And with that, we're gonna put an end to day one and pick up where we left off tomorrow. Day number two, we're gonna finish setting up the store. We're gonna do some email flows and create some ad creatives for tomorrow when we start running ads. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Look at the numbers on our main store. $800,000 generated from email. A large portion of, the, of our profit comes from this and not the ads we're running. I open Clavio and start with a cart abandonment flow. 
Next, I create a Wheelio flow, very similar to cart abandonment. When somebody enters their email and the spinning wheel on the website, they get these emails. Before we head into our final task for today, I'm finishing up the store by creating some homepage imagery. What I did was screenshot this homepage image and perform a Google image search with it. After some investigation, I'm directed to Adobe Stock. I hit the gold mine. I sign up for a free trial, download some images, and eventually come to some final renders. We, we don't have any custom photos. We don't have any UGC. We have nothing. So this acting as a placeholder, I think will do the do job and do just fine. I mean, you think this looks good, right? Yeah. <laughs> And just like that, it's set in stone. Our final task for today is creating our ad creatives. I open up Canva and start the process, attempting to add my own unique flair to it. To get some good backgrounds, I head back over to Etsy and find some wood digital paper. I purchased this one right here with so many different colors. It's perfect. Everything from being able to use it for tropical, we can find a, a green digital paper on here. Let's say we wanna find something blue or even orange for the Halloween stuff, it's on here. All in all, this takes me about an hour. I'll show you the final creatives on day three. Hello? Put yourself in the shoes of a customer. Go through the entire buying process here. I spent over $1,000 on a very custom made template. Let me make this clear though. You do not need to spend that much on web development. In fact, using a free Shopify theme wouldn't be a bad idea. I'm at a point in business where I have the means to invest into this, so I'm willing to do it. Very seamless, very easy on the eyes. If I'm uploading my photo. Okay. Yeah, everything, everything up to this point is pretty seamless from the product pages being super, super simple. It's not cluttered with information basically on here. Are you at the cart right now? I am right now. I'm about to type in my email. Okay. Just starting out, I think it looks great. Yeah. Think... No, it, yeah, it's definitely, you know, it's gonna look better over time. Betty will definitely stand out. And anytime like she's out in public now, she'll just be able to get recognized. I think I might make her own, her own Instagram now. She <laughs> add her own Instagram now. You can charge us for content because because yeah. we need we need content right now. Day number three right now. We're gonna start running ads today. I'm super, super excited about this. Now, before we get into it, I wanna set our expectations. I'm not looking to be profitable over these next few days. I'm looking to collect data from Facebook, find out what works, what doesn't work. And through that, we'll be able to hone in um, on a strategy, refine our efforts, and slide toward profitability. So with that, let's get into it. I've already created a Facebook page and business manager, so I'll start by creating an engagement campaign. I'm going to test 10 creatives in total for three of our products. Halloween, one, two, and three. Tropical, one, two, and three. And finally, dog bone socks. One, two, three, and four. My objective right now is to discover two things. What product picks up the most buyer interest and what style creative generates the most engagement. As of right now, I'm going into this not knowing either of these. Once I get data with this engagement campaign, I'll be able to make more informed decisions when creating my conversion campaign. As for the audience, super, super broad. Placements are limited to Facebook and Instagram and a $25 a day budget. I enter my post ID and publish. I'll then duplicate this nine more times and in put the other creatives. So we're gonna let this campaign run until tomorrow, at which point we will look for early performance indicators and take the next steps. So what day is it today? So today is day four. We're gonna analyze everything in our engagement campaign we're gonna see what patterns we can find, what's working, what's not working, and we're gonna use that data to create our conversion campaign. Nearly 24 hours into the campaign, it spent a total of $200. I'm going to keep this running and I'll tell you why in a minute. But first, here's what I've concluded. See one right here, which got a click-through rate, or I'm sorry, a cost per link click of $1.24. Secondly is the tropical. This ad set generated the lowest cost per link click and engagement. And this ad set generated the highest click-through rate and second to lowest link click cost. We'll start with our first conversion campaign advertising the Halloween socks. We're going to use these two creatives because of their great metrics. However, this one will be removed. Considering that the GIF performed the best, I head back over to Photoshop to create another one. Only this time, we'll use a funny dog face to act as a scroll stopper. I think it will really help us get more engagement for less. 
So here's my plan for this conversion campaign. I'm going to test different interests for several ad sets all running at $20 a day. Once I begin to figure out which interests are performing best, I'll increase the budget while preparing to launch a campaign budget optimization campaign. The best campaign to run in my opinion. CBOs perform best at high budgets though. So before I even think about running one of those, I need to find out which interests are my high performers and if this product is even scalable. I just created our first ad set with three Halloween creatives, location targeting limited to just four countries, placements on Instagram and Facebook only, and finally, I select one day click or view. I duplicate that ad set six times and begin filling each of them with different interests in the dog niche. Going back to our creative testing campaign, I'll keep this active while I continue to test more creatives and angles for our products. And now it's just a waiting game. And I am taking it a little slower with advertising these socks just because I'm not sure how scalable they are outside of the busy season, considering these larger players are already devouring the market. However, with all that in mind, I'm still very confident that we'll be able to make this work and build a great business out of it, build a profitable business out of it. It just might take a little bit more time. Later that night, after Andrew went home, sales started coming in. Talk about a rush of dopamine. I'm sorry, but I have to send a picture of this. This image is from a different previous video and both my brothers took a screenshot of like the one scene in the video and sent it to me, kind of mocking it in a way. So I was trying to test order a shirt from a different company and I decided to just use that. The time that has went into the store has been very, very nice. And it's, it's very awesome to see the final product here. And I have one thing to kind of tie this all together. And it's something that you have not seen, Andrew. You want to see what it is? Yeah. An official Sweet. Lulu Pop shirt. Okay, let me cut this emotional drama and get to the point. How much did we make? Yesterday, we did $60 in sales. One sale came in around 4 a.m., which I think is from the days prior when we first started running ads and then the ad account ran into issues. And today, day five, a whopping $31 in sales. This random $2 one around noon was just a test order by myself. So what's my conclusion? Look at these ad sets and the two purchases that came in. The cost to acquire those customers exceeds our profit margin, but not by much. You see, this is only day two of testing. I mean, these other ad sets haven't even spent $30, let alone had enough events to optimize. Given that we're so early into this and already have sales on what I considered an overly promoted product, it's a good sign and I'm not stopping here. We're gonna be building a team. Um, I'm already having somebody, I've already been in contact with uh, somebody to help run the store. It's something I can't do all by myself, obviously. We're gonna, do, we're gonna be doing a lot of crazy things as well, which we'll talk about later. As I noted earlier in the video, our profit margin, or cost to acquire a customer, is about $17. My objective is to raise that through my upsells and email marketing. I agree. Here's the thing. I'm not concerned about the strategy of this. I know that things are gonna work out for this store and I'm actually really excited about it. Picture it right now, you're driving, up on a billboard, you see Lulu Pup with different socks on there, different UGC customer photos. I can tell you right now, that's something that the market hasn't seen. I mean, in terms of something like this. It's just getting all of that together in a kind of a little amount of time. It would be easier if it was a new product that wasn't as out there.